Robertson, of course, uh, filmfestivallive.com. Uh, it's Monday, but not for me. I mean, I've been going all weekend with uh, people calling and me chiming in on Instagram and Facebook and so on about the unfortunate incident that happened in New Mexico with Alec Baldwin and that set. Uh, later on today, just so you know, on this channel, um, I'll be putting it out, but uh, there's some international press and so on it, but I'm going to have a sort of a panel, but I want to make something clear and I'm going to put a disclaimer in this program right now is that I'm not going to be uh, talking about what happened there as much. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about with a panel of people is safety on set, because what I'm finding is there's a very large misconception about um, how these work, uh, what they do, uh, the difference between blanks and real loads. Uh, and it's disturbing because one of the things that's happening is coming from my um, my firearms friends. I've got my movie friends and I've got my firearm friends and I got my weapons people. And the fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot of misconception, like why did he point it at the, a lot of misconception because having a firearm and being on a range and doing the, uh, the rules and procedures there is vastly different than being on a movie set. We'll talk about that later. But today, here we are, it's Monday, I'm pretty excited. It's gonna be a good week and uh, I'm gonna start the week off with a really awesome guest that I met through a good friend of mine, Sean. He is, uh, he's the shit when it comes to stunts. And uh, not only stunts, but I met him and soon, as soon as I get a little free time, I'm gonna be putting together my weapon slash stunt uh, demo with him, Daniel. And you know what, I forgot to ask Daniel exactly how to say his name, but he's in the wings and I'm gonna take a shot at it uh, once he comes. I think it's Lucerno, Lucer Lucero? Lucero. He's, he's shaking his head. Uh, I'm going to bring him on in just a second here. I'm going to get right to the show. By the way, if you're interested, we are live streaming on three Facebook lives, which is Film Festival Live, my own personal uh, Facebook, uh, also on our YouTube channel and Twitch and a lot of other places uh, that you can see it. If you miss this and you're watching the recording, unfortunately, you won't be able to do what I'm about to say, which is if you want to chime in, ask questions, whatever. Oh, there we go. Uh, you can do that. Looks like someone just did that and they're saying hi. Awesome. So uh, if you're interested in asking questions during this time, it's going to be great because I love talking to people like Daniel because, um, you know, it makes our industry a lot of fun um, and uh, very exciting because you see, the thing is, is that we are the people that, of course, as actors, because Daniel's an actor as well, we are the people that spend our time, train ourselves, train ourselves, to be able to make what you watch on TV where we go, what the hell, that's amazing, how can they do that? And I'm going to show you exactly what that means right now. Hang tight, watch this. Yes! Uh, uh, yes! Yeah! Yeah!
yeah, uh, pretty sure that I don't know if I need to do a show now. I mean, <laughs> wow, you made me look like a superhero. <laughs> well, don't do that no, actually, home. you did that part. I just broadcasted. Daniel, I appreciate you coming on the show, my friend, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for by the me. way, anybody, if you're interested in following Daniel, which you are, on, um, oh, I put the large L. I should have put the, what, is that right, Daniel? Is that your That's, Instagram? My uh on Instagram. Right? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. How do you say your last name? <laughs> so it's an uh, Italian name. It's uh, Lo Cicero, but in English it's Lo Cicero. I Lo guess. Cicero. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, means uh, I found out recently, you know, because in Italian, uh, Italy, they used to assign name to what they were doing. So yes. So uh, my name means uh, chickpea. Chickpea. That's ex you know what? So, Lo Chichero is actually the chickpea harvester. So, so. so when I think of you, I, th I definitely think of a chickpea. <laughs> yeah, hummus. <laughs> okay. Well, wait, I, I got to ask you, though, because this says with one L, should I be putting two L's? No, it's it's good. Uh, I, I try to be fancy and use the L of Daniel as my last name because it's you are fancy. You are you are definitely fancy. Oops. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, first of all. Um, you are uh, that's amazing. I mean, you are. I guess you could say you're almost kind of like me with the web with how I have all these different weapons I do. But I it, I don't think that you don't do anything. Like I can see that you've got. Uh, of course, weapon play, you've got driving, uh, you've got uh, obviously parkour stuff that you do. Uh, I, I, the first question I got to ask you is, did you drive your mom nuts? <laughs> well, I never told her, <laughs> but she already knew, really, you know, I mean, I started stunt when I was probably two years old, started yeah. to, you know, climb up all those, you know, 20 foot pole and uh yeah i was driving her crazy at the time but she got used to it with time so now she's i think she's uh numb <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't imagine i, I know when my mother uh, bless her soul when my mother was alive and i was doing a lot of this gun stuff and the ropes and what she was like but but you're gonna get hurt and you know what i did break a few ribs and a couple of bones here and there but uh that's the one thing i want to talk to you about is is that you know, and I and I don't want to talk anything about the situation that happened in New Mexico. What I what I do want to talk about is safety, because I have to tell you, watching those stunts that you're doing, and I know the stunts you're doing, um, there's a tremendous amount of rehearsal, um, training, and uh, just protocol for uh, literally from whether it's a jerk line or it's uh, even as simple as coming into a situation with a, a blank gun or a gun. Talk about the safety parts of it. Cause I know that you're real big on that. Well, really the safety comes for stuntmen uh, comes to with, with trainings. So the more you train on doing something and the more chances you have to be to, to you know, less chance you have to injure yourself because you're more familiar about the move. Right. about the height, about, uh, about driving, about whatever technical uh, skills you learn. Yeah. You know, the more you're doing it, uh, the more chance you'll have to succeed, you know, when the camera is rolling. So, um, yeah. so there's no really secret. It's work, 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 you know, sure. and then safety obviously uh, comes natural. But safety could also come from other people um as well telling you you know telling other people don't stay around don't don't be there don't be in the line of the of the fire even though it's a blank um don't no, don't you know that safety is a, is a teamwork you know yeah it's, it's always a, a reminder well, i have to ask you with that being said how in the hell did you practice the 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 new stunt i saw you do which you talked to me about and showed me when i met you uh about the side of the mountain I mean, oh, oh, hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to go climb this out of a mountain. Let's work this out. That that is, in my opinion, kind of like the new stunt. I mean, I've not seen, uh, I've never seen a, a, a combat on a wall like that. Yeah. So, uh, how'd you come yeah. up with that one? Well, you know, I, I had a friend, French guy, great stunt man, um, who taught me repelling, but repelling Aussie style. So face first, right. you know. So uh -huh. Your head is actually facing the cliff, and um, and we started to rehearse. You know, the, the only thing is when you start to do fight like this, it means you're really comfortable going up and down and yeah. doing, uh, 
doing repelling. So first and foremost is to get your technical repelling Aussie style and other way around all kinds of stuff down, you know, because the attachment is is uh, is different once you are able to do a 360. So you're fighting on your way down, but you turn it around and then you're fighting up, yeah. you know, so so you have so you have to be familiar and comfortable with this before we throw a choreography now you have to think about what's the move and if you think about the ropes and all that that's where accident can happen so yeah. so you really need to get first the technical uh training down so then you can do it on you know you yeah you know look good doing it when i worked with circus soleil uh and we were in montreal training one of the things we had to do was we did different. I did two point harness because I did two shows a night, five days a week. Uh, so that's like 1300 shows. And it, it does take that. It's, you know, it's kind of like be uh, training to be an astronaut. You have to know what it's like if you're in this situation, that's not normal because your equilibrium, it, it could be thrown off and you need to be able to know that you can take a deep breath and get to that spot like you're saying, because, you know, I was 200 feet in the sky every night and you just, and this is actually a very good point is, is that you have to trust the rigging, the riggers, you got to trust what you're doing. And it, it, uh, and one more point I want to make on that is, is that when I'm trick roping and I'm doing my thing, you can't look like, and I know you'll validate this in any of the things you're doing, you can't look like you're going through the things in your head. You have to have it down so pat that you're just going, boom, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and then I do this and do that. That's my action because that's what you need to do as a, as you, a stuntman yep. and actor. Yeah, you better believe it. There is always so much to think of than just trying to think of your own you know, technique that you haven't mastered yet. So so you need to have it mastered, you know, so have it out of the way so now you can focus on, you know, on safety. For yeah. instance, or... The other thing that I know that you can uh, talk about, which I'd like you to, is, is that you're in a world where you're being put into what a normal person would be called extreme danger. Because if you're doing a fire stunt, because I deal with fire, if you're dealing with and something was to happen, you need to know how to behave, respond. And like you said, it comes with do it, do it, do it, do it, maybe. Yeah. And then safety measure, you know, if something happened, if while you are on fire, you feel that burn, go on the ground, you know, and you have a hand signal where they yep. come up the uh, carbon dioxide, you know, and then, and then you know, yeah. turn it off yeah. for you. So, so you have to put a safety measure for sure. And that's communication with your team. Yeah, stop, drop, and roll. Exactly. I used to say that all the time with Cirque du Soleil because they had seven people in the front that you didn't see in black that if something happened and my Kevlar ropes, because I one time I was doing it and it wrapped around my neck. But luckily, I understand motion mm. and I knew the motion and I could get it out and wow. it went onto the floor. But the point is, is that you have to do this stuff over and over again. So when people see this, they have to know that Daniel's not just going, hey, guys, why don't we try to throw me off a cliff? Okay. Uh, that's not the way it goes. Let me ask you, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite stunt that you've either done or you do that you go like, Hey, uh, if someone says, look, I need you to crash into a hundred boxes from a hundred feet. What's your favorite? <laughs> well, <laughs> one of my favorite is, uh, is actually one I did. Uh, I mean, I have different ones and for different reasons, but this one in particular is pretty, uh, Pretty good. It's the first one you see on my reel, actually, is that 60 foot drop tackle. Into the water. Into... Doesn't seem like much, but when you tackle someone and you land on your head 60 foot high into water, which is not soft when you when you hit the water at 60, 60 foot. Um, I mean, it is some pride to it. That uh, is, uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, and I met one of my one of a great friend that I'm, you know, is another stuntman. I met him on the spot through another friend of mine. And um, we started to meet for um, for that stunt and uh, met the guy on the day. And his name is Patrick. 
And, you know, it came to me and, and it's like, Patrick, you're going to do that uh, stunt with Daniel, going to do that 50, that 60 f- foot high, you know, yeah. fall into water. And, you know, not knowing him and I, I trusted my friend that the guy knew what he was doing. <laughs> right. So it's a trust because when you are doing a tackle and you're going on the water head first, 60 foot. What you don't want to do is detach yourself in the air because if you hit the water and you hit it again, that's yeah. over. Yeah. And you don't want to lose consciousness when you hit the water no. because then you sink, right? And then so, so that was the deal is to really, once we get hold of each other, no matter what happened, we keep Hold on. holding on to each other. And we did it. So it was a, it was a, it was a teamwork. Um, it was a great, great stunt. Was, it is a great stunt. And I'll tell you, you know, definitely uh, agreeing with you on the water parts is that, uh, you know, you've got to be, again, as a stunt person, you have to be comfortable with water, fire, <laughs> earth, wind, and fire. And, you know, I did a I did a commercial once called, with super ho- or pocket hose or something, and they wanted me, they wanted me to wrap myself in about 100 foot of garden hose and then fall into about a 12 foot uh, pool, 12 foot mm-hmm. deep. And I got to tell you, you know, I said, I need to rehearse this because what happens was that if you watch the video, you see me fall in there. But what I got to tell you is, is that if you freak, you're done. Cause I was like, I got tangled cause it's 150 feet or something. And they want, and I was spinning and, and I was spinning. And then I fell in. So I was kind of a little bit dizzy to begin with. And again, the point is, is that water is not what people think it is. Because you can hit it wrong and it's, you're done. Turns into concrete. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you saying the thing about you, you, the teamwork, the trust you need. You think actors need to trust by falling off a table and being caught. The, when you're talking about working with stunts and you said you knew the person I think that was coordinating, but you didn't know the guy you're doing it with. It's, it's, it's not a, it's not an easy thing to do. Let, let me ask you, what's your favorite film that you've done? Did you say film? Yeah. What's your favorite film? Do you have one? <laughs> I do not. You know, I had this question many times. I mean, I, 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 I can't make up my mind. Uh, no, I understand. So People ask other, me that all the uh, time. I go. I mean, if you t- talk to me, uh, what's the best action movies of all time? Or, or where I actually admire them uh, and the choreography was actually Jackie Chan in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. That's was amazing. I put the love work into those fight choreographies. Oh. And if you know what I'm talking about, uh, you know, yeah. probably will agree because they, they have some crazy stunts in there. Yeah. And over there, safety is not as uh tight as here in america i know so, you i know well there is a you know some stunts knew they were going to injure themselves in this one that's why they had three or four guys doing the same stunt <laughs> and you know so um so i mean with all due respect you know it's it's just uh and also the going back to what were you saying as a stuntman you need to know how to do this and this and this not uh not uh, not automatically there's some specialized stunt people that only do cars or, or only do fires yeah, yeah, yeah. or only do fights or only do hard fall yeah you know um so th- there's some uh uh you know uh stunt people that are uh, just specialized in one thing yeah. that they be hired just to do that sure absolutely so. and you know you brought up something really important i think i want to mention as well is is that Um, Yes, the United States of America is much different in regards to a lot different in regards to safety precautions. I I did uh, El Matador or The Killer in uh, for Netflix for 46 days in Brazil. They don't really care much (laughs) about because we were doing they wanted to do a saddle pull and I was arranging it in the harness and they went, we can't afford the harness. I'm like, I ain't doing a saddle pull then. And in case you know, a saddle pull for everybody out there, there's two ways of doing it. One is either from the leg, it's the harnesses around your body and the rope goes to your leg and it looks like it's tied on it. So it's pulling the leg or there's a front pull where you can pull it either. Either way, um, you know, and then I've worked in India. There's not a lot of safety precautions when you get outside the country in some cases. Talk about that. 
Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going uh, there on Saturday. I'm going to India. Oh, are you? For a month and a half. Yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, I'm a uh, action coordinating and fight choreographing uh, a TV show called um, uh, Royal Blood, and it's uh, it's going to be a big big thing, you know, with castles and all that. But I'm also going there to try to help as far as safety. Uh, and uh, you know, there's going to be lots of fights. It's going to be big battlefield. So I hope. And I'm bringing an assistant with me, so I hope uh, that um, my eyes or my assistant eyes will catch all the unsafe, you know, uh, precaution because we are kind of responsible for sure. the, for the people. So, but when there's a lot of people, it's hard to see and to yeah. have the where. So, especially so if pay the, attention. Yeah, especially if the protocol is not normal. And and I hate to say this about. Well, it's happening here in America, and I think we've seen this recently. Is is that uh, you? How long have you been doing this industry? Uh, well, it started. It started for me to answer every time because my first stunt was two thousand three, okay. but it was in Seattle, so I started there slowly, and then when I moved here, that's where I really so concentrated. Two thousand three. You've been doing this for about twenty years or more, mm. and. I just will say this uh, is is that the how we get paid, the amount we get paid has changed a bit. Uh, and um, that is so crucial with what we do, whether it's stunts, guns, whatever, because you need to have people that are incentivized as what we do to be trained all the time. And when you step outside and you're not in America, uh, in some cases, I'll say, uh, they they will just say yeah well we don't have budget for that just you know fake it like in Brazil they're like can we just get some garbage boxes or something I'm like and do what why don't we get a sled while we're at it and put the guy I mean the point is is that yeah. we have tried in America to have union standards that you have to live and abide by um, mm. that doesn't always happen especially if you're on a non-union set and they don't mm. have the money. Or if you're on a low budget union set, so um, yeah. yeah, I understand your uh, definitely concern and having eyes watching where you're about to go. Yeah, because, it'd be challenging uh, to for me to come and impose what I call safety because it's different over there. So it's uh, you know it's something we're gonna have to do anyway, you know, because yeah. you know it's my name in there. So I just want to make sure that uh, you know everything's gonna be be made to so people can um, you know can uh safe as possible. can survive the experience I yeah guess. safe as possible um yeah. let, let me ask you here let, let's just talk about one more thing and then i'm going to ask you a final question you have a little more time sure great uh so if someone says hey daniel i i mean i i'm sure it's not gonna be a mom saying how do i get my kids started in stunts but if someone comes up to you and says, hey, Daniel, I really would like to uh, learn how to be a stunt person, uh, what would you tell them <laughs> other than uh, don't? No. <laughs> first, I mean, obviously, that person, uh, first, my question, first question is, are you passionate about it? What's, what pushes you to do that? Good. Uh, because to throw yourself, you know, going through a table or a glass window or all that, you know, it's got, it's got to be fun for you. You got to be motivated. I've, I've known some uh, actors that wanted to be stunned, but when it's about hitting hard the floor, they don't, they are not for it. Oh, I want to be a stunt, but I don't want to hit the floor. Uh, oh, yeah, a chances are you will never be a stunt because, I mean, really falling is, is number one to do. You know, when I said, you know, there is specificity that uh, stunts do. Falling on the floor. If I had to choose one, you, know, you need to do is 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 falling. You know, because you know you more often play a bad guy that gets shot and go down. You know, and put squibs on you, and then you know get a couple shots and then you go down. You know, yeah. so if you can't fall properly or fall hard, uh, chances are you know you're not in, uh, doing the right uh, career career. You know. Yeah. No. Say. No. I. I, oh. I so, so, but if you are, yeah. if you are motivated, if that's your passion. Then, you know, I'd say, you know, train, train with stunt people, get information. Where are they? Where do they train? Go there, meet them, you know, show them what they can do, learn from them, you know, um, you know, socialize, uh, 
create a surrounding of, of stunt friends. And, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's where we, you know, uh, the best to connect because if you never worked as a stunt person, the stunt coordinator who wants to hire you, if you never had some work and that you probably won't no. not take the risk because if something happened and if you can't do it, he's going to get yelled at by the director, not you, he, and he might risk to lose his job as well. So really it starts with, with trust, you know, he's got to know that you can do that move. So the first thing would be probably do a reel, a stunt reel with all of your moves that you can do, sure. you know, know how to fall, if you can flip, if you can drive a car or a motorcycle, if you can do a high fall, if you can ride a horse, you know, uh, any, any things that can show that your abilities on it. It's called a stunt reel, like yes. you just showed me. Side yeah. note, uh, uh, please follow Daniel on his Instagram. And if you are at that moment where you need a stunt reel, uh, as you can see by his reel, but I have seen other people's reels, and I'm signing up right now. Where's my my wallet uh, to uh, work with Daniel <clears throat> to put together a lot of my my weapon stuff because I have some ideas, and uh, he's a master at doing this. And I say that, and I say that wholeheartedly and confidently because I know a lot of stunt people, and not all of them get the the angles, the understanding, and shoot and edit and know uh, how to do that. And uh, I, I, of course, have seen a lot of Daniel's work. And so if you were looking for a stunt reel, uh, definitely Daniel's the person, but he's gonna vet you. He's gonna ask you some real tough questions about what you can do, what you wanna do, because I know that uh, everything you put your name on, Daniel, that you make sure it's got the seal of approval because you did say something really important, which is that, uh, about the other stunt, uh, any stunt coordinator uh, is, is that you can't risk. This is not an acting job per se. It is, but it's more uh, of a physical action and reaction job. And if they don't know that you can do this and you have nothing to show for, yeah. And one last yep. thing I'll say about that is, is that it's not a real easy industry to get into. Uh, I, you know, I've been doing this, like I said, for 40 years. And I remember back in, the 80s and early 90s working on a fine romance and other stuff and doing uh, some stunt stuff. But because I wasn't a brotherhood that, you know, I didn't get a lot of the jobs because it is a it is a group of people that are expecting high expectations and safety and being a loose cannon isn't going to get you any work in this industry. So uh, following people like Daniel, I, I recommend. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for um, uh, yeah, 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 exactly right. it. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, a snowball effect. Once you start to get the, your first job as a stunt, then you have a reference. Then you say, oh, I work for him. So now the other stunt coordinator who wants to hire you might go and ask the other stunt coordinator who you yeah. just worked with. Yeah. You know, be reliable is this is that so so it's like a snowball effect the more you work the more you work you right know, uh, and 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 all you have to do is something wrong once and you won't work so there it is because people are depending on you in a much farther sort of uh, uh scope of things when you're dealing yeah. with stunts final yeah. question i want to ask you brother is <clears throat> this is really just whether or not you don't have to answer this in regards to the industry you don't have, it could be about life. I want your philosophy that do, do you have a passion, a philosophy that you love when someone comes up to you and they go, all right, tell me what you're about, Daniel. Um, you can tell me how to make pound cake or a bunt cake and go, you really got to add this much butter. Or you can say, I think if you want a wonderful life, you could do this. Is there a philosophy that Daniel holds that I want you to share with people? <laughs> Well, if they were one, I would say community. Yeah, I would say, you know, sharing all of your knowledge, everything that you have, so that person could know and uh, could be even better than you. You know, a good teacher wants the student to be even better than than him. Uh, so, so for me, you know, I I always I am very open minded, uh, arm open to teach the one who wants to learn. Um, and uh, um, that would be my philosophy is, is, you know, teach everything you have, don't, you know, to the person that you think is worth. It. And, uh, 
you know, don't hold back um, and help each other, you know, because yeah. help can come from anywhere. You know, you can help someone, it can help you back and, you know, um, don't expect it. But, you know, if you see that a person in need, especially if it's someone that has the same mentality than, you know, philosophy, then you, you know, don't hesitate to go and help. Right. Well, that old adage of um, sometimes the teachers learn more than the students, uh, mm-hmm. and that's because you're receptive. Uh, I, I would yeah. say, in my opinion, that <clears throat> this industry we work in, Hollywood, uh, movies, TV, is definitely, uh, it has a lot of egos. And egos are awesome mm-hmm. for you to succeed and push yourself, but really shitty on set. So you should know that. Any thoughts? Yeah, I'd say ego is necessary uh, to to be self-aware, you know. Uh, um, but then, you know, as as uh, when it comes to other people, you know, everybody's got talent. You know, yeah. it's just different talent. It's just you know, just you know. Uh, that's why you gotta respect and honor everyone, everyone on set, or every every people there. You know, again, you know, you're doing an art piece all together. So even the person who brings coffee brings the good humor to yeah. the team. You know, so it's a teamwork. You know, I I don't care what you do in on set. Everybody is 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 a uh, is a uh, part of the team. You know, sure. so uh, but yeah, as you said before, you know, the teacher. You know, you teach what you have to learn. You know, so I say. Yeah. So absolutely. It's, uh, and, it's, and sometimes you know, it's funny because I've even just recently have talked to people that are half my age and they're talking and I'm just listening. I'm going, Holy crap. I I didn't really know that. And I never thought about it that way. And if you're receptive, which you should be in this industry, because that's what you're talking about is if you want to make connections with people in general, but especially in this industry, you really have to be receptive to doing something really important, which is this listening yeah? because uh it's not always about your opinion and your ego sometimes you have to just li- listen take a beat and you'll learn especially when i'm si- i'm sure that you're coordinating and you're talking through something uh you get you're the law you're the law and so listen up uh because daniel is speaking daniel thanks for coming on the show it was truly a pleasure i know i'll have you on again uh, maybe i should just have you on from india that would be awesome uh, <laughs> on top uh, of an elephant <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know if you can do the riding i saw you ride that bull i'm wondering if you could do that on an elephant in india i doubt it anyway, why not you Let's never try you never know they have wild indian uh, wild uh what do you call it wild indian. they have wild uh, animals there all right good i appreciate your time brother and by the way Thank please you. follow daniel on instagram you can see it's daniel with one l and his last name starts with an l but Check this out. Make a screenshot. Do what you can. Follow him. Ask any questions. Please don't ask really stupid questions like, hey, can you get me a job? I get a lot of those. Nope. Can't do it. Trying to get myself one. Anyway, uh, with that being said, be safe. And uh, it is truly a pleasure, my friend. Pleasure is shared. Thank you. Hang hang tight right there. I'm going to close it up and then come back to you. All right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for uh, watching the show today. Remember today at two, which is only a couple hours away, we're going to do this live stream with a bunch of people that I know and respect in the business. Uh, Michael Pfeiffer, who has done a, a a lot of films in the last 20 or 30 years, but a lot of Westerns that I've been in. And he's going to talk about uh, some stuff like CGI and so on. Joey Dillon, who is amazing as well. Good friend of mine um, and some other people. So it's going to be fun. Oh, Victor. Victor is a really great martial artist. Uh, so in any case, I really hope you have a wonderful day. If you can't catch the live stream or you missed this one, check it out on our, our page. Um, of course, filmfestivallive.com. Be safe, be well, be successful, and be considerate. We'll see you next time.